Friday, Friday, gang it down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to, to the weekend, weekend. Hello everybody, I am Dreadscythe, and welcome to my 20 and 10 project. If you uh, haven't seen the little faux uh, poster image that I made and was uh, put on Twitter, uh, the 2010 project is something that uh, came very near and dear to me very quickly. Uh, over the last uh, two to three weeks when I realized that in this grand old year of 2021 is the 20th year that I've been doing community work of some sort whether it was being an officer or may you know the mage class leader of, of, of a wild guild to um, helping out with image work on sites, doing overlay images for podcasts uh, here there alike, um, doing free Twitter banner work to full-fledged website building, template making, forum uh, building and management and moderation to, uh, good in, in, in the, I don't know if I would say good old days of Ventrilo and TeamSpeak getting and maintaining those servers. Uh, with people and moderation and all that fun stuff that was done back then. Um, all the way up to, you know, full on in the deep of it with developers and community managers alike at Blizzard. Anything and everything in between. Uh, so I've been doing that for 20 years plus, well, 20 years this year. And 10 of those years, another big milestone has been with uh, Diablo itself. So, I found it fitting, and with the 30th year of Blizzard being this month, I figured, you know, 30 years of Blizzard, 20 years of me personally doing community work, and 10 years of me personally doing the uh, Diablo community work, um, I figured, you know what? I usually do a BlizzCon gift, which I usually do for other people, and I'll mention those much later on in the video. Um, I want to do a video for myself, but even though this is a, going to be a, a quick trip through many stages over the last 20 years um, with my community work, I would not have gotten to where I am if it wasn't for a sheer Mount Everest amount of people along the way. So as I go through these websites, uh, in the article that's also on uh, BlizzPro, uh, I mentioned, you know, who were the contributors, who were uh, personal shoutouts as well, and I'll try to do my best to get a couple in there as well in this video, but there's a lot and I'm not going to bog down the video any more than I have to with <laughs> shoutouts. So with that, let's go to the uh, one that started it all. Uh, Total Perfect Dark started in 2001, um, was just a website that uh, my friend close friend Kevin and myself started it was just because we loved GoldenEye we loved Perfect Dark even more because there's more customizations and everything like that so we figured out GeoCities back in when Yahoo was the shit um, was a great place for me to start learning how to do website work and basic f uh, graphics art with not even Photoshop Corel if that name rings a bell um, it was great. I learned how to do basically, you know, learning how to do links and linking with images and all that fun stuff back then when MySpace was all the rage. Um, it was a great place that we we came up with gun ideas. We came up with uh, plot ideas for the next game. We came up with we even came up with our own little fan fiction. Okay, fine, multiple fan fictions. I'm not gonna link to them. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just had fun with it, and we and I personally met a lot of people along the way. Found a lot of other sites. It was, it was a great old time. Uh, in that similar vein with GeoCities uh, was Total Starcraft. Um, Starcraft was a game. It was it was really my first PC game, 
And I have to thank my eldest cousin, uh, David, who got me into PC gaming because every time we would go over there, whether it was Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, anything like that, uh, first thing I was did was try to find him and try to get him to show me what computer game he had this time to show me. So there was usually SimCity 2000. Um, I'm pretty sure he still showed me the Sim Tower. Uh, but StarCraft was a whole nother animal. It was like, this is amazing. You know, units and combat and base building. And it was a great time watching him and I wanted to get it I wanted to play it and my fam my parents eventually buckled and they got Starcraft and Brood War and they installed it except back in those days their computers didn't have that much space on the hard drives so they got loaded on the zip drives so I could only play the game if the right zip drive was put in and my dad was paranoid that he had to be the one to switch the zip disk and I don't blame him because one time I did it without asking or telling him and I don't know if I broke the, <laughs> the zip drive but I know he definitely got stuck in there and he had to do something so lessons learned in hindsight I suppose um, but yeah like Starcraft was great the website was if I had to describe it was basically just a wiki we, we didn't get a chance to really do that much with it um, because we moved on to Counter-Strike uh, after that but Starcraft was my gateway drug into Blizzard games itself. So, like I just mentioned, with Counter-Strike, um, there were uh, two clans I was involved with. Uh, the first one being Nuke, and the second one being uh, Team SF. The first one, I didn't do any of the website work for, but they took me in regardless, because I... Let's, let me just be honest, I sucked at Counter-Strike. The first four months I played Counter-Strike, I didn't have a sound because my hand-me-down computer from my dad had a corrupted sector on the hard drive and the only way to fix it somehow, somehow was to run a, run a disk repair and then it was in the OS hard drive, of course. So we had to install Windows 2000 and when they did that, we, I lost driver support for the sound. So I had a working computer. It was fine. I just had no sound. So imagine playing Counter-Strike without sound. Imagine how enjoyable that experience would be. I'll give you a second. Yeah, not much. So when I went off to my freshman year in college, I got a new $1,000 laptop that I called my $1,000 sound card. And my whole gaming experience changed drastically. So um, so with Nuke, uh, I eventually, uh, probed into the Source SDK, and I was like, you know, these maps are pretty cool. I, I liked, uh, Scout Knives and Op and FY Ice World, um, all the, all the fun maps. Uh, Office was a good one I liked a little bit, and, um, Aztec, old Aztec. CS 1.5, yeah. Um, but I was like, I, like, how hard is it to create these things? So after investigating and plenty of tutorials on YouTube, um, I eventually started making my own fun versions of these maps. So I made several different versions of Ice Roll, I made uh, several different versions of Scout Knives, which was another fun map. Um, I started playing around with versions of Playground X, if you remember what that one was like. Um, and thankfully, uh, moving away from Nuke, which was a great clan, and they accepted me, and they loved the maps I made, and they gave me really good encouragement to continue learning and making bigger maps, actually giving me requests for maps to make uh, to take the ones I had built and made them bigger. Going to Team SF, um, doing the same thing, but doing dev texture maps, if you know what that is. Basically, you know, it's a, it's a color with a grid, and it says it's a unit. Uh, on the texture. Um, thankfully with uh, the Team SF website, which I did build, and they were just so thankful that, you know, this random person came I was like, hey, if we, if we can make this trade-off, like, I'll just, I'll give you the maps I made and I'll make maps for your clan. You just take me in and I'll just help with everything. And they were, they were great about it. Um, even if it was relatively short-lived um, for, <laughs> 
let's just say wow comes for us all we just didn't never saw it coming but that's a little foreshadowing um luckily enough and doing this video i thought almost all my maps were lost because my early uh computer days were plagued by several hard drive failures and i never really learned my complete lesson in backing up but in the team sf uh html uh, files. I had a download section and I had a zip, ar a zip archive of almost all the maps I ever created and I cannot tell you how awesome it is. So that's why you've been seeing footage off the side of weird janky ass maps, but they were maps I created. They were a lot of fun at the time. Um, the only map I don't have and it annoys me is because I did all the texture work uh, by myself was basically an FY Ice World stylized to look like the NES Super Mario Brothers. It had a castle, it had a flag, it had the animated vines up to clouds. Um, in the middle, where there's typically the buy zone, there was a, a coin box that would actually go up and down, textures would change, and an op would come out. So it was, it was great. I had it. It was the last map I ever did, and that one was unfortunately lost. Uh, forever but I did find all the texture files for it so maybe one day if I'm feeling bored maybe I'll recreate what that was so like I said and throughout uh, both the CS uh, you know in the clans as well as everything else um, my friend Matt uh, had gotten me originally into Nuke because he was my friend at the time in high school and he got me in there, and as I said, WoW comes for us all. So he said, like, hey, there's this hot new game called World of Warcraft. It's based on the Warcraft RTS series. I'm like, wait, Blizzard had another RTS? <laughs> I know, that's heresy to some of you. But I was just, I was in the sci-fi, not the fantasy. Leave me alone. Um, so he got me into World of Warcraft. He said, here, come, try it out. Uh, I have a small group of five or six uh, people who are on Spirestone at the current time. So we came on, I roll Horde. Always Horde. Horde forever. Alliance of Scum. Hashtag that. Um, and, you know, we started on Spirestone. It was really great. It, when I look back, it was really great to have a small, good starter uh, group right off the bat um, compared to people who just went in by themselves and got blasted by general and or trade chat and were like what the fuck is this shit <laughs> I'm out so we started on Spirestone with a on Horde and then we went to Illidan and rolled Alliance yeah those were the dark days also, I'm, I, I will always hold this forever over over the group, especially my friend Matt, because the the day we decided to move the Skull Crusher, which wound up being up our long term home for quite a while, um, was the day I hit 300 tailoring on my mage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So we moved to Skull Crusher, and it was a great fit for us and our personality and mentality, and really the server that we really loved. It was a PvP server. The server was highly defensive of its culture, where if someone uh, was like came in the server forums back in those days, it was like, "Hey, uh, I'm looking to move servers or so a new character. Is Skull Crusher like a nice like server?" Literally all the comments will be like, get the hell out. Don't you dare come. We will murder you. We will black we are already blacklisting you. Don't come. And while that seems mean at the first at the first hearing of it, it was because both Hor the Horde Alliance and that server were hated each other, but there was a great sense of honor in in PvP and in maintaining the culture that the server had it was cutthroat it was you see someone kill him yes all those things but we wanted to make sure that culture never died 
because we understood it was something special that other servers had kind of either gotten away from or become lopsided due to faction imbalances and we did our damnedest to maintain it there was so there we just had honor in that so with uh that little group which forgot to mention what the name was was lucifer's hand a very matt sounding name um again i did the website for them we uh you know had images had everything in fact i think this one the select forces um and one or two other websites i had used the same uh template uh because back in those days that was that was fancy that was that was lit as shit and also that was when microsoft had remember front page how, how many of you, you old people out there remember what front page was from microsoft you know you know an actual microsoft program that was useful <laughs> that helps you make websites free could you imagine that <laughs> uh the days so after uh lucifer's hand we had we you know we got our 60s we wanted to eventually do raiding so that's where horde border patrol came in now horde border patrol um i didn't do the website for i didn't do anything this was one of those times where I eventually became an officer and a major class leader, but it was a great time because it was a good 30 to 35 of us that made up the core, you know, level 60 rating team. We couldn't do MC, but we were able to do ZG, ZG relatively well. Uh, we did it every week. We had fun. We were all friendly with each other, you know, you know, typical wild drama aside with, you know, the kids that were like oh you're 16 no wonder why we're having issues getting everyone on at a <laughs> on a friday night go figure um but it was great and then uh well, like i say in the article post uh <laughs> guilds back in those days more often than not live lived and died like fireworks they were really great they popped and then they fizzled so eventually the uh guild leader uh keys got into let's just say trouble n n like rl kind of trouble and the guild leadership passed to me temporarily and another guild noticed and reached out to me to this day, i don't know even know how they even knew or reached out i don't know it was so long ago um called dark solace and they were trying to see if we want to do a guild merger which back in those days was you know with the power balance you know a little iffy but we set a date we told i we for, i ferociously told our members what was going on uh the officers helped out and there was one friday that spent an hour plus having people leave hard border patrol and then get whispered over invited over to dark solace for an hour and then leaving and then myself leaving coming over becoming an, uh, an officer and after all that chaos of moving people from one side to another we decided let's run the first combined gilded uh mc run which if I remember correctly, we got up to the caves where we got up to the caves right before Lucifer and Magmadar, but we didn't actually get to Lucy or Magmadar. But back in those days, that actually wasn't all that bad because that trash respawns really quick from the raid instance portal to there, and to get that far was amazing. So, leaving Horde Border Patrol and getting invited to Dark Solace. Um, where Mr. Bean King and Stonehoof are kind of the polar opposites. I guess was, that was just the way Guild Leader versus Raid Leader was back in those days. <laughs> it always, like, the Guild Leader was always had one personality type and the Raid Leader was always another. I don't know what it was. But... It was a great guild to be part of. Like I said, I was an officer and eventually, uh, once again, became the mage class leader. And we organized, you know, MC attunement runs and Ani attunement runs. Uh, in fact, I remember there was a solid two to three months of where every Thursday it was Ani attunement night. So the whole guild came on and for like four to six hours, everyone in the guild just helped each other 
get through the Anitume process. I remember, specifically, I was a lot further ahead than most people when we merged over, so I became a four higher portal tier. <laughs> So I would, so whenever one group would get to a point where they had to go from like, I don't know, the the barons over to somewhere in um, on the eastern kingdoms, go go to Orgrimmar, fly down, portal everyone over, portal myself over, you know, log out for like the ten minutes or go do whatever or herbing in the, in the lower areas for whatever reason, wait till they were done, port them over there, then another group would name me, just to help speed the process because flying in Zeppelin takes so much time. We were able to get everyone in our guild, plus like 10 or 15 others, all unattuned. And I kid you not, the first time we did Ani, because while also getting Ani tuned, everyone was watching videos. Everyone was just trying to understand how the fight was going to go. We killed Ani on our first damn time. I will never forget that. And not only did we kill her on our first damn time, we killed her on the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. It wasn't until the eighth week that we went after that we died once. And we laughed hysterically in the Ventrilo server because we were wondering when we were actually finally have our first raid wipe to it. Um, so that will always be a great memory. Um, in MC, we eventually were able to get up to Rag and kill him. And then we eventually got to a point where we were able to basically kill everything in the raid in one night. Uh, we did get uh, a pair of bindings uh, that was wasted. And that's all I'm gonna say, <laughs> because that's a wild guild <laughs> drama for you. Um, but other than that, it was it was really awesome to be part of that community. I well, that's where I feel like I got my wow leadership, um, or at least my path in in-game leadership uh, started. Uh, it was just a great time. Um, the only thing was. Like I said before, no matter how good the guild is, um, eventually things fizzle out. So when Burning Crusade came out, it was really good the first couple of months, but then everyone kind of started going away. We did eventually, we did get up to Kara as a group before that happened and, and cleared out uh, that, uh, which was cool, you know, experience all of Kara uh, back in those days. But eventually, as all guilds do, they disappeared, we all kind of went our separate ways. So, with that, you remember the term wow killer? <laughs> this game's gonna be a wow killer, and how that was set out of with every MMO during that time. Well, it was Aeon, or Rift, uh, Galaxies technically launched very before wow. Um, but there was like every MMO was a was a wild killer. So after the Burning Crusade and my time there, uh, I joined uh, what I call the Guild of Guilds, <laughs> the one the one guild to rule them all, and that was Fist of the Empire. And this was actually one guild. Again, I didn't do anything with like website wise. This is another you know role of responsibility type deal. Um my girlfriend yeah Alyssa was just a girlfriend at the time I think yeah yeah just a girlfriend at the time <laughs> long ago <laughs> this is this is this is this this was hard tracing down 20 years of, of your past gaming life like imagine trying to do that shit yeah so my then girlfriend Alyssa was an I got into Warhammer Age of Reckoning, which was Warhammer's big realm vs. realm uh, MMO at the time. And it was actually a really good game. We loved it. There are still some features in that game I wish other games nowadays have. Or they kind of do, but not in the se not as closely replicated as it did. And we, we were playing, we got up to max level, and then she got whispered, because we weren't in a clan, so she got whispered to join a clan, and that was Foe, or Fist and Empire. And then after she got in, naturally, I got pulled along. I'm like, okay, you know, I'll be a lemming, I'll follow. And then 
we got part got made part of the of the Ray group and everything, and then eventually started learning that you know Foe was made up of ex military, and not only was this their only game they were in, they were in multiple games with it with each with their own you know what you would expect a guild master officer kind of responsibly roles but there was an overall there's an overall arcing uh leadership role so there's leadership within leadership within leadership a very structured a very military militaristic approach towards organizing and it was it was actually really great <laughs> there was procedures for everything you know at least for someone like me who likes excel and weird nerdy geeky shit so it made perfect sense so eventually this is where i found um even though we haven't like m talked in years he's still very near and dear to my heart personally and in gaming wise uh mr gonez as i called him and the reason why i bonded with him so much was because he has such a great way of looking at issues and problems they're trying to solve them yes in game and with you know player retention and making sure that we did things right and everything like that um, and this was all when he was dubbed a guild ma uh, a guild leader for a new game called Fallen Earth that was coming out it was an MMO FPS he was assigned as the guild leader and f I became an S1 officer which back then was personnel so maintaining <laughs> personnel records main, uh, making sure that uh, new applicants were replied to make sure new applicants were assigned an interview time to do the basic level interview and then if they were a good fit refer to Gonas to do the follow-up um, and to also make sure everything was good because remember like I said structure they were very structured so there was just a lot of he gave a lot of good insight he gave a lot of good um, viewpoints on things he wasn't he wasn't critical he knew how to figure out the right approach and I think those are two very different things and I really took that to heart on top of becoming I would say decent good uh, friends with him during that time um, that I was in the guild and you'll see later in the credits you'll have you'll see my my pillars of wisdom justice and love trio and he is definitely uh, the wisdom pillar in my last 20 some odd years I, I really did get a lot from him um, yeah <laughs> it, it, it's again memories <laughs> 20 years of gaming 20 years of anything um so with leaving fist of the empire this is kind of the break between uh my non diablo and diablo experience and uh even though it took a while you know having stints you know world of warcraft and everything like that um this is where I basically I guess sign my soul away to Blizzard <laughs> because everything from this on point is Blizzard only so maybe the help makes your viewing a little bit more pleasurable at this point so with that uh, the first big one Diablo expressions God even even this like blurb I have doesn't tell the whole story um, so I'm just gonna go through it really fucking quickly. So, Diablo Expressions, uh, the idea for it started in early-ish 2011, and it was because at that point, a lot of my friends had stopped really playing PC games in general. Uh, a lot of my friends were several years younger than me, so I had, so, so I was like in my job, they were either just out of college looking for their job, and I remember this, around 2008, 2009 is when, you know, the, the first of like 15 times. The, the economy sucked so they were at home they were in jobs retail so it was harder it became harder and harder to keep up with people so i was pretty much by myself in gaming terms so i'm like i was shown the way of diablo via uh force and sixen um 
in their Diablo podcast back in 2011. And they, uh, specifically Sixen, uh, who is my pillar of justice, and I'll get to that in a little bit, for getting into Diablo in general, for just figuring out what the lore was, what the story was, what the characters were. Like, why should I care? Why should I want to play Diablo 3? Um, and with that inspiration, I decided, you know what? Let me try to, let me go, let me go back to my roots. Website building, forms. Let me try to build a place and hopefully if I build it, they will come. And I may not be the friends I played games with before, but hopefully I'll meet new people and build new relationships with. And oh God, did that ever happen in so many ways. Um, there were, first and foremost, I built the website. Um, again, was inspired by Sixin because I, I say, you know, brief tangent before I get to the website. Um, I don't, want, I don't want this to get lost. But the reason why Sixon was uh, my pillar of justice is because he symbolized, maybe not entirely, but definitely a lot, the power of the fan site and making sure the fan site lived on, especially for a game that wasn't really having that much support for all those years. And I'm a big proponent of um, fan sites being fan sites and being creative, being original doing stuff, you know, trying to get up there to the developers, but also, but just being there for the fans and, you uh, know, stuff we don't really see that too, we don't really see that often nowadays, or if we do, they're there, but they may disappear. So that's why in relationship, the guys at Maxwell, I tip my head out to you because you're doing what true fan sites were back in the day. And that's really hard to do. It takes a lot of effort and it's usually thankless. So, again, tip my hat to you guys at Maxwell, Sixon, you're great wherever you are. Um, but moving back to the website itself, so, you know, I learned how to use Joomla. I learned how to use a template maker f uh, for, for the website to put on Joomla. I actually investigated the form software that uh, Diablo fans was using at the time, bought a license for that, bought the hosting. That Temple Maker costed money, so I bought that and then got it all ready. And then once I had it all set up and had a couple news posts, I researched how can I get in contact with Blizzard and not look look like a total troll. So I don't even know what I did. I think I found an email to like PR or something and I sent it out asking like, hey, I'm a new website. I'm really looking forward to the launch of Diablo 3. I was wondering, would I be able to get a beta key for myself so I can make content around the beta for the game? And I, that was, at that point, the biggest shot in the dark I had ever, ever taken. Like, like, who am I at that point? Like, just had a website, who, who is this guy? And sure as shit, Bashyak, our game's first ever uh, CM, uh, replied and said, yeah, sure, great to have you on board, here's a key. I remember I was working out at the time, I was on the treadmill, <laughs> I did not fall on my face, and I saw the email come in, I saw I, I was going to be in the closed beta at that time, and I saw the key code and I'm like, well, and I'm like, no, damn it. <laughs> just finish the five minutes. Finish the... It's only five more minutes. Do five more minutes on the treadmill. Just do it. Do it. And then you can go home. And then you can start the download process, which is probably going to take forever. Anyways. So, did that. Got in there. And then I was like, you know what? I want to make this a better website. So, I put out applications. And I got staff members. Oh, I think over a dozen and a half staff members along the way. Um... We went in, we did some early podcasting. Um, the look of the website was updated by uh, the one and only in Kira. He's my, your brother at heart, because he not only helped me with Diablo's questions, but a couple of other uh, projects from then. And he just made the site look good. Like, there's stuff I look back on now, and like, I could use it today. If it just didn't have the double expressions markings on it, that was like, what's that? Um, 
but like his work was top notch. It was always free, and I was like, I was always so thankful for his for his graphic arts work because at at that point I wasn't up to snuff as I am now. Uh, I'll admit that freely. Um, but it was always great to have him, and then. Like I said, there's a lot. So we developed uh, two pro. We developed two website programs. Uh, the first one being Ring of Fire, which became basically an affiliation network with other websites at the time. I think we had like five or six uh, at the time. There was one that had all the all the models from Diablo three, but you can view them in like a three D model, kind of like what Wowhead does. There's another one that was. Um, you know, it's like a database, such as like a raw database function, and a few others. I don't remember what they were doing, but at the time we had them in there. Uh, that was something I personally did. Uh, there was another program that I initially started uh, when I reached out to a company called Typefrag. I don't know if any of you knew dealt with that, but that was basically a Ventrilo TeamSpeak mumble uh, server uh, reseller. Um, and reach out to him for our sponsored, uh, you know, maybe like 50 slot server. And they came back and said, like, oh, this is actually really cool. If you just, like, put your thing on your website and, like, you know, send us a picture that you do it and we'll check it out just to verify. Uh, yeah, we'll give you, like, a 300 slot Benjula server sponsored free. I was like, holy shit. So... With that, we, we came up with the Vindictive Order, which essentially was the guild leader would come to us, they would state their case, we would we would say how many people do you anticipate having, we would give them anywhere between 4 to 10 channels, we would give them the administration rights over those channels, and we figured out a way to have a channel for each, for each guild, which remember, this was Diablo 3, so this was before official guild support was even in the game in any way or function, to have a recruitment channel that people could come into the vent, into that channel, and then the administrative people could pull them into their own individual sub-guild channels. It was amazing that we figured it out. And it worked, and it was great. There were so many people that we met along the way, really fulfilling, really the promise of what I wanted to do with Diablo Expressions to begin with, which was just find more people to play this game with, so that's why it wasn't such a lonely experience. At launch, I think we hit 285 to 290 of 300. We almost maxed out the server on launch night. I mean, well, launch night was launch night. But it was, that server was packed the first three to six months, if I remember correctly. Um, and that... Like I said, I started that, but another staff member, uh, Hypnotic, took over that. I really, he really took charge. He, that really became his baby. He run that really well. I, I don't think I ever gave him enough credit for it, for how hard it was. Um, and on top of that, we I, that was when I got my first interview with a... My first and only, actually, uh, interview uh, with a Blizzard developer, and it was actually Julie Humphreys. When at PAX East, I forget what year, was it 2013 or 2012, I forget, um, when the console versions were first revealed. And I, I remember playing the PlayStation version, being on the floor, having my tiny dinkus little camera that was barely able to get audio from, my, from her and myself that was distinguishable from all the background noise. Because again, it was on the... Uh, floor, I thought we were being some kind of low back haul or something, so shame on me. I'm prepared for another day. Um, one of the last things uh, was we. I also reached out to Steel Series and was able to get a sponsorship for them, so I was able to give out gear to the staff members as well as give some of the way. So, it, again, it, it, I just wanted to make sure I did as much as I could for the staff guys to show them because it was all volunteer work. Was, no one was getting paid. In fact, I was spending a lot of money <laughs> back then. Um, but it was all a great experience. And then just kind of um, to wrap it all up, uh, I remember, I think it was 2012, I got sent 
five of like the mini material figures, if you remember what those look like, as well as five collector's editions that were fully signed by the dev team. And I remember I held on to one of those, I gave all the mini material figures away, and I gave away four of the five collector's editions, because that was amazing. Uh, that was a surprise out of nowhere. That was a great Christmas gift uh, from whoever sent them. Uh, but that collector's edition did eventually find a more deserving home, but we'll get to that later. So, I guess in Salmation, Double Expressions is where a lot of my fan site community work really grew and really matured as well as, you know, figuring out how to manage, I don't want to say manage people, but like work with people within the community and expanding and getting my foot in the door with Blizzard. It, it, it was a big step forward. And it just, when I looked back, I was like, that was like, oh, it was only around for two years. So much happened in two years. Um, it's crazy. So with that, um, unfortunately, for those who were playing in D3, like in D3, not like Reaper Souls, kind of people like, oh, I love WoW. It's like, when did you start Burning Crusade? Like, oh, no, you, no, no, no. D don't say that. <laughs> so, um, there was a dark time, a, a, a decently length dark time for uh, Diablo 3, where, let's just say the best, if you wanted to get views, and be more popular, it was better for you to play the game whilst crashing it at the same time, making videos, trashing it. And that was the way 90% of the community operated. Um, so during that time, I was like, all right, I can't, I will, ref I'm refused to do that. So I want to do something still with Diablo, but I'm like, why not do something bigger? So that's where Grind EXP came from. So Incuria wasn't, uh, so at that point, uh, a few of the people from Double Expressions came over. So, and Kiro did the graphics work again. He did a stellar job. Uh, Sinister Demon, who was otherwise known, who became Beta at least at that point, uh, became a co-partner uh, of the site. And then uh, Quad and JC Monkey, who were parts of other, who were either part who of the Double Expressions community or from other. Uh, podcast at the time, uh, JC Monkey, and a lot of others I met along the way were part of the Shattered Soulstone uh, podcast community, clan, etc., etc. Uh, all helped me out with Grind XP, and that was and Grind XP was our attempt to cover all games, basically do the news. Uh, we wound up um, launching three individual podcasts that were hosted on the. They're actually hosted on the hosting for the website, which is nuts, but we got away with it, so I'm going to take it. So the first podcast was uh, Grindcast, which was our like roundtable, you know, kind of free-for-all kind of website, um, not website, uh, podcast. The Roman Sea Ramble, which I I tasked uh, Beto with, because he was more in the Hearthstone than I was at the time, or at least he was better at it, because he had played Magic the Gathering, or at least I think he did, who had a better concept of the game. And uh, Quad uh, was interested, so they both uh, did the Rumsey Ramble, which was, again, Hearthstone podcast. And then the last one was uh, Siphon Shield, which was kind of continuing the essence of covering Diablo, but because, again, the, the dark, toxic time it was, and there were actually other podcasts covering the game day in and out better. I didn't want to be another one. I wanted to make sure there was a good angle. So we made Scythe and Shield a Diablo influencer interview podcast where we would have someone from the community or a content creator come in and we would just ask some questions about themselves. Uh, the tagline was take a crowbar to that battle tag and see what under what's underneath. And that's what we did. We asked them like, you know, what was their first what was their first time playing Diablo? Who was did someone get them into it? Um, how long have they been playing it? What do they want from the game in the future? And then there was always this like you know random questions in there, and then sometimes they gave a really interesting answer, and we just dug down deeper into that. And it was just you felt like you actually got to understand people, and especially in these times where you know you can watch a streamer for like forty hours a day, but you don't really know who they are. 
I mean, you know, doxing and, you know, privacy concerns, you know, aside, it's like, I think there's a deep yearning to understand who people are on a deeper level. And that's what we were trying to do with Scythe and Shield at that point. Like, try to understand who we are in the community. So at least the few of us who were left back at those days, we felt like we had a better uh, camaraderie uh, with what we were doing. Um, so, Grand DXP, again, uh, lived a lot shorter life compared to Diablo Expressions. Uh, we, I did act, I did get in contact with more CMs, and I actually helped a couple of the other guys, uh, get in contact with their own CMs along the way, and I still remember the Hearthstone closed beta giveaway that we did. We only got five keys to give away. We give them all away on a Friday and Saturday, maybe a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, one weekend, as soon as we got them, because we want to capitalize on, like, the behemoth that Blizzard itself didn't even know it had at that time. And that month alone, we hit, like, a million hits on the website. And that was because on that one weekend alone that we gave away the beta keys, we had as much traffic that weekend as we normally would have gotten in a month or two. <laughs> it was nuts. <laughs> it's like, you see the Greco, normal traffic, normal traffic, normal... <laughs> I was like, yep, the power of giveaways. Especially for games that people wanted to be part of. Um, but eventually, at that time, doing, you know, doing, being part, being not integral part, but being a part of leaderships and um, everything kind of started taking a toll, so I'm like, alright. <laughs> Grind XP kind of lived up to its name, it was a bit of a grind, so I needed to, like, simplify. So, at that point, we leave Grind XP and we go to Scythe and Shield proper. Um, JC Monkey came over with me. We continued the tradition, you know, as it was, as a podcast, but it was just Scythe and Shield, just the podcast, nothing else. Uh, and Carrier, again, helped out with some of the preliminary uh, work uh, ideas uh, on the 2020 version as Scythe and Shield Rebirth, but uh, primarily it was just, you know, want to continue the trend, want to get more people on. And then eventually around uh, 2016, is when I was emphatically kind of done with doing my own thing. Like, maintaining hosting, maintaining form, maintaining all the media stuff, uh, pretty much by myself, was taxing. It was going on for years, the, it, it was costly. Um, I wouldn't, I don't regret it at all. It was just, you know, it, it, it builds up and then eventually you just kind of have to go away. So at that point in game, uh, I actually met up with J. <laughs> yeah, and if you're from the NA servers back in those days, and you were a wizard, you you know who J. was. Um, he's one of the top wizards at that time, and there was the Vizirai clan, and I don't even know how I got in contact with him, quite frankly. Um, Maybe he made a post on forums. Maybe he said something on Twitter. And I answered the call. And that call was, hey, we're looking for someone who would make a website. And I made one at forums. I know, I just said I, was, I got out of doing that and I got sucked back in. I'm my own worst torture, I really am. But I think what I realized back then and I realize even more so right now is that I find it hard to play games, any game. PC game, console game, anything where I can't help build up the community in some way, where I can't feel like I'm a deeper part of the community. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just playing a single player game, I feel like I'm wasting my time at this point. Um, so, with that, the VR clan, you know, went in, built the website, the, took the same forum software I was using from DE and Grind XP and just used it for them. And it was great. They were, they were one of those clans that I got in and I felt I was really smart playing the game and then I realized how dumb I was as playing a wizard. 
um, you know, their understanding of mechanics, their understanding uh, with Excel sheets to really break down skills, breakpoints, everything at that time. Uh, understanding, you know, the right properties you really want to get on stuff, uh, the min-maxing element. Um, the only clan, like in the first several seasons, where, you know, getting up to Paragon 4, 6, 400, 500, 600, where you felt like, oh my god, like, no one really gets up to, and look at them being Paragon 800, 900, 1000, or more so. So it was like, yeah, I'm really high Paragon, and then you look at the top elite guys, like, ugh, I'm a nobody. <laughs> so even back then, it was still like that. Um, but I learned so much, uh, Jitch and Melkor were Long Island boys, apparently. And I lived no more than 20 or 30 minutes away from either one of them, and it took us going to BlizzCon to finally meet. So, take that for a grain of salt. Uh, but, it was it was really a great time. I, I really learned a lot um, from them on how to understand how to play the game, and just kind of be a better I guess detective when it comes to figuring out how the game actually works. So to them and everyone else in the Vajirai clan, I give you a uh, tip of the hat for everything you did. So moving along um <laughs> oh boy um uh, the, the last two main uh, parts before we get to the gifts, which are which is a quick section. Uh, Bliss Pro. <laughs> now, I have to kind of put the cart before the horse a little bit because the last section is the West March Workshop. Um, I got into Bliss Pro because I was a fan of the West March Workshop back then and I was watching when it was just Archon and Nineball. Nineball, as I said before, and I'll say it again and I will continue to say, you shave your beard, we're done as friends. Um, and I was watching, it was just two of them, just the two of them, just the two, uh, and then Leviathan shows up as the third co-host. I think it was episode 21, I could be off. And I see this monstrosity, this overlay, and I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm like watching them on the show, but my eyes are drifting beneath Leviathan, constantly going like, like, this is hurt, this is painful. And it happened the week after that. And the week after that, I'm like, no, fuck this shit. I have to fix it. I'll, I'll do it for free. So by that point, I had built up a, as I always do, I had an extensive graphics library of UI elements, my own custom stuff. And I was able to basically piece together what Archon had done for the overlay and just made it nicer and actually have Leviathan in there properly. And I sent in the overlay and it's great. I could watch, finally watch the podcast in peace. So, after doing that, you know, just watch the podcast sit there. And then all of a sudden I get an email from Aldorian, who was one of the co-founders of Bliss Pro, saying like, Hey, uh, uh, Leviathan sent me over your content information uh, with the good work you did for the overlay. And want to know, hey, you want to come on board as being basically, long story short, our graphic artist uh, to do stuff when we need it. I'm like... Sure, why not? Uh, because at that time, I really wanted to focus on upping my graphics arts game while not having to maintain a website. Social media all across everywhere. Forums, you know, all the grunt work. <laughs> um, so I went on, I went, my first um, commission within Blizz Pro was to do uh, Eldorian's uh, real life real spec, uh, real life respec, which was my first genuine from scratch logo attempt and it worked out really well and then I worked with uh, Kick Tripod who was a beast in Bliss Pro because he was running the Well Met podcast at the time as well as starting up uh, the Overwatch uh, podcast uh, that, that he was getting together and I did logo work and overlay work and all that just for him and then uh, Twiz, who was doing, uh... oh, it wasn't the Heroes Power Hour, uh, or maybe it was, I don't know, 
It was so long ago. But there was the Heroes Power Hour, there was the Twiz cast, there was uh, an Extra Life uh, one in there. Um, oh god, there's maybe one or two others I'm forgetting at this point. Um, like, uh, like live streams or podcasts I, I, I kept on chugging out graphics for, and each one I feel was a little bit better, a little bit more uh, to the standards I hoped I could accomplish. And I was getting closer and closer and closer, like, you know, this one was like 90, this one was like 92, or this one was like 95. And just continuing to get there and just trying to be really the good graphic artist on call. Um, and then... that So separating, you know, what I did for them, which was the graphic artist part of it, and focusing on the people of Biz Pro, which I'm still a part of, because it's like 2015 to current on the article. Um, everyone was amazing. You know, I really learned a lot because um, I eventually would start doing articles and I learned uh, through reading their material as far as, you know, how to, how to angle questions, how to present things, how to make sure you're doing things in a good way, um, and how to present things in a in a, in a manner that's appropriate and there was just so much to learn from and I'm still learning now um, but just uh, everyone there love you guys um, but yeah so there was the graphic arts side that's where I also I also learned started my that's where the development hell uh, article series would also start from that still continues to this day and then, because you now I was I was getting back into Diablo three more more regularly with this seasons, because there were a couple of seasons I took off, and then I came back, um, met up with my four uh, four musketeers along the way. That being uh, Shepard, well, three. Lucas doesn't really play, but he's part of the group, so you're good, Lucas. Um, but Shepard, Lion Sword, and Knight, um, who were all through the Bliss Pro community, as well as Westmark Workshop uh, community. And they kept me going, and then, you know, eventually we we all head east, and we all go towards the Church of West. So, the less big section, um, before the gift section again, uh, is the Westmark Workshop. 2015 the current so on paper uh, it, it, it's four hosts it was Archon and Nineball who were originally there and then Leviathan joined as a trio Archon would eventually leave Leviathan would uh, take a sabbatical where L Lieutenant Lunatic would come in for a little bit and then Leviathan would come back um you know, all that kind of stuff, but uh, all for hosts, amazing. Love you guys. And I'll say this now because it's going to come up again, but I I never viewed myself as part of the podcast, just that guy behind the scenes who was just trying to make, keep it keep it the best it could be in my own way. So, but for the premise, I want to focus on two individuals in general. Uh, those individuals would be uh, the Grammar Goons. Oh, wait, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the Old Child Fanboys. I mean, the guys who came up with Sup Fellas. Um, no. Uh, I'm talking about Nineball and Leviathan. Hmm. Yeah. You guys. <laughs> um, it, it was always interesting how how you can develop friendships virtually over years. And Helis seem to start out of nowhere and then they just become a thing. And I don't remember like how our relationship our friendship friendship ever became a thing. It's like trying to look back at like your best friend and trying to pinpoint like that's the point we became best friends. It's like, you, you, you don't know. It just kind of happens. Could it be the first time we all decided to go to BlizzCon together? Like, the the four of us, being I'm all of Ivan, 
I think, monstrous in myself? Or was it when I did, like, my umpteenth overlay for free for you guys? I don't know. <laughs> All I know is that this has been a crazy journey with you guys, let alone the entire rest of the Diablo community, developers and CMs, uh, and everyone else's communities uh, as well. Um, God, I'm just looking at, like, my notes. <laughs> um... Oh yeah, the overlays. Uh, what a fun trip. See, this is how I remember the show, damn it, <laughs> by the overlays. Uh, always the graphic artists in mind. So whether it was uh, episode 25, where Leviathan got equal treatment, finally. Uh, or quickly after that, where Archon left, as I mentioned before. And it became just the... Uh, you delinquent duos doing this show delinquent duo grammar sorry not sorry uh professional podcasting hashtag 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 um whereas just you you two doing it but i want to make sure archon was honored so that's that's why i did the crusader which at that point was Cru uh leviathan's main the demon hunter which was nine, nine balls main at that time and the wizard, which was of course Archon at the time, all in their super form. So, uh, accurate form, Archon form, and Vengeance form to symbolize the trio so it would never be forgotten. And then uh, that was episode 35 where the Westmore Workshop icon came into being itself, too. And then uh, when episode 51 came around, that's where. Ooh, uh, excuse me. Uh, that's where I inchified the overlay, put on the ancient borders. And then where episode 100, which that's in the gifts, so we're not going to talk about that now. Uh, going back to like Diablo Roots and it's, so uh, I wanted to make something a little bit more darker, dingier. Not, well, not dingier, but you know, something more like Diablo 2 kind of vibes. And then finally making that clean, slick version that you've been using. Uh, ever since, even till now, in episode 157, which I forgot, not only was that the episode the overlays were debuted, but that was the one and only time I hosted this show. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> See what happens when you go down memory lane? Uh, and then, you know, that's just the personal aspect. Like, again, like, I, I'll reiterate, like, I never view myself as being part like, part properly, like, you know, if someone says, hey, are you part of the Wetchmark Workshop? I'd be like, eh, I do the overlays. I'm not actually a host of the Wetchmark Workshop because I always wanted to make sure you guys were always upfront on us, and that happened a lot more than it should have. <laughs> but then again, whatever, at this point. Um, but that was just because I just wanted to give you guys that respect. And also, uh, from... Just hanging around doing that stuff, I eventually became, you know, a mod of Leviathan's channel. That's where I met up with hashtag Levy Best Mods. Yes, they got in there one way or another. Um, I would, whenever Alyssa and myself would uh, go down to Disney World, we Nine Ball would somehow, some way, get shuttled up to Orlando. But we would have a grand old time. We would pay for his meal and his drinks. Um, just because, you know, that was a proper thing we felt we should do. And it was always a great time just to be able to hang out. Not have to wait all the way from one BlizzCon to another just to hang out. Um, and just to, having those friendships. Whether in being just... Every once in a while just talk to each other, keep up with each other, help each other through the good times and the bad times throughout all the years. And... Yeah, we may have had our fierce discussions, debates, viewpoints, perspectives. I mean, we still do, and we always will. Um, but I will always view our friendship with love and admiration, and you two really are my brothers from another mother. I will always have that. Uh, I will always say that, and yeah. <laughs> so, before, before I get to I will simply, I will simply say, is always remember you guys just do your best, um, and just keep being you, 
and you two are totally tubular to the max. And remember to keep this thing a bitchin' kitchen off all these hooks. Yeah. To the ones that will understand that you'll get it, to everyone else, keep on scratching that head. Um, yeah, so that's kind of going, so all that kind of goes over the history of um, the websites, and I'm just going to quickly go over the gifts I've done. Um, the first gift I called King of the Mountain, that was for, again, Kick Tripod, because like I said, he was a monster doing all these podcasts and all this personal stuff. I wanted to give him some recognition, and I made a very fun plight off his name, you know, the last part being Tripod. Um, I remember making a, taking a wooden platform, putting things on there that represented mountains, and then getting an actual small tripod that would fit over those mountains and had a flag with his logo on it to symbolize overcoming your struggles, getting to the peak of the mountain, all that kind of stuff. Uh, because at that point, I think he was either, I think he had quit his job and he was trying to go full time on top of doing everything else. And it was really hard on, I don't want to say hard on him, but it, it was, he was trying to make it work. And I wanted just to make sure if there was something, someone some, out there was recognizing what he was doing. So that was the first of apparently a lot of BlizzCon gifts. It, it just became a thing. I don't know why. It just did. Uh, the West Much Workshop 100 episode uh, was two individual gifts. It was a the West Much Workshop uh, symbol that... Uh, I had come up with. I had 3D printed it. You, both of you, better still have it. If it broke or anything, lie to me and say that it's still together. Um, and then there was like a shadow box with uh, West Coast Workshop graphics, of course, but it was signed virtually, <laughs> but signed nonetheless um, by the Diablo team or as many people that Brandy who is my uh, cohort in this, to get signed and then sent over to me. I transposed them on the image, and I, that was a really great gift from them. I still remember the video because I had to go for for this video. I had to go through old West Country Workshop videos to get material that you're seeing on the side. And I remember how shell-shocked they were, and it was the greatest thing in the world. Uh, so that was during a podcast, but... All the other ones I'm going to talk about are all more uh, blue sky guess. Except the one. Whatever. Uh, Sudoku. <laughs> SVR. Um, I don't know how it happened, but that was just me being really bored at work one day. Taking his Sudoku, Sudoku command in his Twitch channel and making a literal drinking game out of it. I, I came up with a dice idea, I came up with instructions, and I made two dice 3D printed, one black, one red, I, I made a uh, Thai takeout container, I made a custom one out of black um, uh, construction paper, you know, oak tag, there we go, there's that word, oak tag and folded it out and I made the instructions, put it all in there, I want to give it to him. It, it, it was a gag gift, but it was also symbolized like, hey, <laughs> like I, I appreciate you and everything you do. Here's a small token, even if it's nonsensical and funny. Here, uh, take it. Um, the, the King is here. Uh, the King Spin uh, little video I did for Big Daddy Dan. Um, the truth is, Big Daddy, if you're seeing this and watching this video, I've gotten this far. Um, I've always wanted to do something for you, but it was like, you have the graphics, you have the social media, you have the overlay, everything is good. I'm like, what else could I do? And I was like, so I was watching the Kingspan, and I'm like, I wonder what, what this would look like if we got Louis Hork in there. And then that's when the idea started. So that's why I want to do something, because you're one of the old pillars of the Diablo 3 community. I want to make sure that Again, another small token of appreciation from someone in the community. I wanted to make sure that, um, as I said, I wanted to do something for you for the longest time. And that was 
my little small thing I could do for you. Uh, community gifts. Oh, Wolfcar and Nevelistus Brandy. Um, these two were really, I won't say emotionally charged gifts, but I felt I felt like a real action. Like in 2018, I felt like, you know, I really want to do a gift for Wolfcrier, who, you know, he may not say he's a pillar of the community, but I will call bullshit on that because of all the work he does with the charity, doing streaming when he can, and just maintaining as best he can that whole work-life balance that we all are dealing with. Um, and doing that season after season after season and just making sure that, like, you know, it's it was his cause that we all took up. And, and while I pull up the image, uh, which was an image of, you know, a, a stock image of Terriel that I modified that I pulled off the same trick that I did with Leviathan Eyeball and their 100 image, but with the community, because for Wolfcar's gift as well as Brandy's gift, they were originally going to be by myself, but I'm like, it didn't feel right being a community gift if it wasn't by the community. So I enlisted originally Leviathan to help make uh, the Twitter group to get contact to everybody, to get everyone organized to help out with both of these gifts. And for Wolfcryers, it was an image of Tyrael, and I got signatures from everyone in the community to go around Tyrael, uh, as well as uh, myself, but I put uh, words on there. And it's a little hard to read because fancy font Photoshop and, you know, everything. Um, but you'll see it on the side, but I'll read it for whatever, what I came up with. And it kind of reads in part like this. For the people that are too weak, for the people that are too scared, for the people bravely staring death in the face, you have chosen to stand up, you have chosen to rally our community, you have chosen to be our leader, to be the shining light that calls to others, to be the voice that calls for the causes of your fellow people, to be the source of righteousness and justice in, in this world. May your crusade live long, and may it live long in those who you inspire. And he did exactly that. He he had a cause. He started out, I think it was originally with uh, Dropadewski on the first one, and then it just became everybody's cause. Every season, more people would come, more people would come. People would eventually go to do it in other games. Uh, Path of Exile, and maybe one or two others. And it just became this thing that just happened. And for a long time, when the seasons were stale, and they weren't really changing, this was the key thing that came, that gave me something to come back to, to get excited for the new season. And it didn't really have anything to do with the game, per se, sometimes. But it was the excitement of, there's no level with the cause. There's another article I have to do for Blizz Pro to get it out there to help uh, advertise it for Wolf and, you know, do the retweeting. And it, it, it made me excited, helping him out in his cause. So, and it was for so many others, and he's been so successful with it that I thought I really need to do it. And if you remember from Diablo Expressions where I talked about those collector's editions I got from Blizzard, there were five of them. I gave, I gave four away. And I felt like he really did deserve that last one. So I, I gave him my last collector's edition that I got. I still had the wings, which I thought was very fitting because they were the Tyrael wings, or styled. And it all, it all made sense to me at that point. So I gave him that collector's edition along with the photo that everyone had signed and it just made sense and he was really appreciative of it and it was a really good moment uh, from BlizzCon 2018 and if equal if not greater somehow some way was the gift I wanted to do for Brandy our fearless ever moving forward uh, community manager at the time and for her at the time of this recording I don't know how much I'm going to show of that video on the side um, but I wanted want to get as many people like you know 
you know, the first interactions or the, the one memory they have of Brandy. And and then there was a funky dance montage to Rebecca Black's Friday because she hates that song. Enough, so, of course, I had to do it. And then just really making a video that showed our community's appreciation for her tireless work and effort that she did even when even before blizzcon 2018 happened like there was still some uh vigil in the community and then of course uh, blizzcon 2018 happened and then it only uh, went up by orders of magnitude for a matter of time um but i really wanted to make sure that she was shown appreciation and um uh, even though it took this long to mention her, I always viewed myself throughout this whole thing, like I said, of just wanting to be there for the community, help the community out. Um, even though there were times I was like, I'm not getting my <laughs> personal due. Like, I'm happy I'm in Immortal as an NPC name, but I, I always, that was a secret want. I always wanted and to be a named NPC in Diablo 3, but I tried not to let those personal wants get in the way of doing the better thing for the community and just trying to make sure that the community is well maintained, because um, that's what I was good at. I knew my strength, that's what I played to. So it took a lot to heart from Brandy and how she did things. And with that, I, she's the last pillar of that trio. So she represents fully the love aspect of the community and community building. So even though it took till now to mention you, Brandy, no, that's, you mean a lot personally in that way. So that the last thing in this video which has gone off way too long, um, is the Diablo Cards Against Humanity. And this was a brainchild idea from SVR, who was like, who was, who his mind was blown when he was playing the original base version. He was like, you know, we should really like do one theme around Diablo. And then, and then went radio silent for like, a good half year and then randomly on discord he said like hey you remember that idea i brought up like do, do, do you want to do it it's like oh now we're gonna do it like three to four months before blizzcon's gonna happen uh sure <laughs> and we just went crazy like i didn't think we were gonna get as many cards as we did um it, it like the game it's as horrible as it can be which is, you know, parts about Cards Against Humanity. But it's like, a, it's a trip down memory lane from all the way from the beginning days of Diablo 3 all the way to 2018 and everything that happened. It had everything. It almost had everyone too. There were uh, Twitch streamers in there. And in fact, I still have the, the whole damn game in my bedroom right behind me um, that I caress it. I, no, I don't. <laughs> don't worry. The cards are safe. Um, but that was, it, it was such a weird feat of shock and amazement that we actually came up with the cards. We actually generated them all. They all got printed. They all got cut. They all got sleeved and it made it. And we played it multiple times at BlizzCon 2019 and it was a real hit. Everyone loved it. Everyone had a great time laughing. A lot of the cards, most people got, some people didn't get the cards and that was a way of like, people sh unintentionally showing their age or how long they've been playing Diablo 3. Like, if someone was like, King Kongdor picking his nose, like, what does that mean? Like, oh, you, you youngin. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that was a really good gift. Uh, Estrella did a lot of work on that. I did a lot of work on that, and it was, it, it showed, and we'll probably bring it out next BlizzCon. Hopefully we'll have another expansion pack to add to it. Um, and it was great. So, <sighs> so with that, we have finally reached the end of this damn video and it was a great trip down memory lane. 
and more importantly, to the dozens, if not hundreds, of people that I've met along the way, and some of you I've, I'm happy to call close, if not, you know, best friends during this whole adventure of 20 years of community work and 10 years of doing stuff in Diablo. Um, it's been a real trip, and I hope that it only continues more, and that we that Diablo 4 and Diablo Immortal um, really just help us get another five years, another ten years. Um, you know, gives us the like, gives us only like a little reason to go to BlizzCon and still hang out and catch up with each other and fold more people into our group and only expand it out more like we do every year. Um, because just as how BlizzCon eventually becomes more about the people you meet versus the games, so does community work. Eventually it becomes more about the people than it does what you actually do. Because what you do, you can do it anyways. But you find more purpose, more wanting, and just want to find more people, hang out with more people, talk to people. And especially after last year, it's more important than ever. So, with that, the video is almost over. Well, it's over for me. But I put together a little credit section with a lot of people and pictures along the way. Maybe one or two surprises in there, too. So, thanks for watching this long ass video. Thanks for being there, and yeah, that's it for now. See ya.